Hello, this tutorial is going to show you all of the different features within the lead management page. As an administrator, there are quite a few things that you can do differently than uh, a regular agent can on the lead management page, and I'll show you those on here. So when you come to the main lead management page, whether you click on lead management on the left hand side, or when you first log in, it brings you to this page. Um, you'll notice a couple of different buttons here. One at the top here is the lead management call plan track button. What that does is it will refresh the table below for the up to 50 leads at a time that it shows on this page. You'll just simply click that button. You'll see a little Ricochet logo at the top, meaning that it's refreshing and it will refresh all of your table data that's listed here. Um, this is good to use if you are using this as a static page and you want to see the latest information that is on the page, you simply click the button and it will refresh the data for you. Just below that, we have our add lead button. So if you wanted to manually add a lead into Ricochet, you click on the add lead button and you would put in your first name, last name, phone number, and city. And you can add other fields in here as well. And once you add all the inf information in and you click save, it will take you to the lead details page for that lead where you can enter more information in. So we'll call this test, testing one, put the phone number in, no city and click save. and it will take you to the lead details page. It will assign the lead to you since you are the person creating the lead. And from here, within the lead details in the lead info, you can fill in all of the other information. Your page may vary in the way it looks, um, depending on how your account is configured, but you would then be able to enter all of the relevant information from that manually created lead. Okay. To the right of the add lead button is the edit button where you can edit the columns that are visible on the lead management page. This change affects everyone's view. It is not custom for you. It does affect everyone company wide. So if you click the button to edit, you can pick up the seven additional custom fields from your lead system to show on this page. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of some of these right now. And I'm going to add in a different field. So you simply click on the add new field and you click inside the lead field. And you pick the field that you want. Okay, so I'll pick DBA name. And you also have some default fields that Ricochet provides. We can hide the company name if you'd like. We can hide other information here, full name, phone, etc. And you can also show certain things like lead ID. And then you simply click on save and that will refresh your entire Ricochet browser. And when it comes back up, the new columns will be listed there and you can then click the edit button and drag those columns where you want them to go. So we could put lead ID all the way at the beginning or just in front of the date. You can drag any of these columns anywhere that you want them and then click save and the system will refresh again. And the columns will be where you place them. Okay, we also have filters. So you can filter your leads on the lead management page by any of these options here, lead statuses, tags, lead owners, vendors, which would be your lead sources, states, branches, or lists that you have uploaded. So you can filter by specific statuses. We'll pick new lead. And after you select your filter, 
or multiple filters in here, you click on the filter button and it will filter all of your leads by that status or whatever status, uh, tag, owner, et cetera, that you have selected. You can also do a date range too. So if you want to look at anything from November 1st to December 11th, you click filter and it will filter by the lead creation date between that date range. And from here, you can save this filter. So if you want to click save and call it saved filter new leads, you can save that filter and you can also have the option to make that your default filter. So every time you come to the lead management page, this is what would show up. For this purpose, for the training, I'm going to leave that unchecked and click save as new filter. And now I'm going to go ahead and click clear filters. And if I ever want to come back to that original filter, I don't need to go into filters, select my status, select my date range. I just hit the drop down and select my new lead filter and everything will show up as per the filters that I had selected. If you want to edit the filter, you can make some changes. You can add another status, click filter again, and then you can click save. And you can either update the existing filter or save it as a brand new filter. If you want to delete the filter altogether, you click on remove filter and it'll ask you to confirm. You click OK and the filter is gone and you now will see everything in Ricochet. This tool is good for building pipelines. If you wanted to take a look at your leads that are in a particular sold status or sale status to see a particular progress of those leads or a, a collection of leads that are in a particular status, the filters and the save filters will be a handy tool for you to use. Also, you can search over on the right hand side for any of the fields that are listed on the lead management page. So if you wanted to look up specifically the state being PA, it will pull up any lead where the state contains PA and clear filters. And you can also filter by any of these columns that are listed here, or you can leave it wide open and look for anything within the lead that has PA in it. Oop, hang on one second. Here we go. So if you want to look up uh, John, anybody with the name John, anybody that has a lead with John in it, it will search for that user. Whether it's the first name, it will prioritize by first name. And then if it's Smith John, it will put those at the bottom of the list. Okay, search by first name, last name, lead ID and so forth. Okay. We also have some drop downs for vendor selection. So if you want to look up specific vendors, you could do so here instead of your filters button. You can also search by a lead owner. You could filter by statuses and also by the last action, which would be your inbound call, outbound call, email or text. And you could sort within that. So if we want to look at all of our outbound calls and then sort that list, from oldest to newest, it will do so here. And then you simply click on clear filters again. Just above that is a lead assignment button. Now your account may or may not have this button enabled and it is able to be added through your company settings. But what this does is it allows your agents to click the icon and throw in either the full email or phone number of the lead that they wanna take ownership of and assign that lead to themselves. Now this is a great tool to use if you are in the business of receiving live lead transfers from specific lead providers. Live lead transfer companies will typically call you first and confirm that they have you on the phone and talking to the lead before they pass the lead information over to Ricochet. What that does in turn is it makes the lead hit Ricochet but it does not assign it to the user who picked up that phone call. So what the user would have to do 
is go into the lead management page, click on lead assignment, and search by their full phone number or their email address. And we'll just throw this in here. As you can see, it pulls up the lead and you can they can now assign it to themselves. And now they are the lead owner and they can take uh, notes and add other information into the lead after taking ownership. Okay. And then the last section here, we have an actions column where if you hover over certain sections, it'll tell you exactly what it does. We have the little I for information. And what that does is it gives you information about the lead. It shows you all of the historical actions that have taken place on the lead from phone calls to text messages to emails and um, and so forth. And it tells you the type of call, whether it was a real time through one of your calling queues or if it was a drip dial call through your follow up calling queue. If somebody called into one of your main numbers, your inbound IVR numbers, or if it was a manual dial. Also, it will show you if there was a text that went out. It'll show you the campaign name that it went out from and the number it went to, and also date and time stamps as well. Okay. We have a call recordings icon. If you have call recordings enabled in your company, you will see those listed here. You would simply click the recordings button. And if there were any recordings listed, you would see a little microphone icon where you would click it and you'd be able to listen to those phone calls. Okay. We have a view lead button, which will take you into the details of that lead. And it'll take you into all, you know, where you can enter information into the lead. We have a click to call button in multiple places. So we have a click to call next to the phone number, and we also have a click to call in the actions column. We have a quick actions button. It's a three dots near the right. When you click it, a panel will open up on the left hand side where you can enter notes into the lead. You can enter a task, which we'll review in a later tutorial. We have text messages, so you can send a text message right from this quick actions. And if there were any social media profiles associated with the email address on that lead and you had social uh, profiles enabled on your account, uh, the social services, you would see any of their social media profiles show up listed here, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and Twitter. Okay. There's also a click to email icon that may show up next to the email addresses. And what that'll do is that will open up your native email client on your computer and populate the new message with the email address that's listed here. As an administrator, you can perform multiple batch actions on the leads. So if you select all of the leads or you create a filter and then select the leads within that filter, you have the option to delete the leads. You can perform batch actions where you can change the status on the selected leads to another status. You can assign the leads to another user, or you can add a tag to the leads that you have selected here. When you select those uh, filters and you click on save, it will ask you to confirm you want to do it and you click OK. It will apply those statuses, lead owners and or tags to the leads that you have selected. If you select more than 50 of any particular search and you want to perform an action, it will queue up that action and perform it as a batch action on the queue. And you will receive an email notification when it begins and when it is completed. You can associate leads as contacts and you can also merge records and you can only merge five at a time. I believe it's four. Okay, there we go, six. You can merge up to six records at a time. You would select the records you wanna merge 
and you click on Merge Records and it will give you all of the details from all of the leads and you get to pick and choose which fields you want to retain from all of the leads. Once you select what you want to keep from all of the other leads here, you would click on Merge Leads and it will collapse all of those leads into one lead. And that concludes the training tutorial on the lead management page.